after we found a place to put all 10 names, then they said we were ready to launch. <laughs> you see the, the patches of the three distinct missions uh, on this mission. This is a couple of hours before the, the liftoff, and, and again, uh, at this point, here it is two hours and 38 minutes to go. Uh, we're mostly thinking about not too distant future. Uh, we really want to make sure that we're uh, remembering all of the things that the people taught us. Uh, during the suit up, you try to concentrate on what you're doing right here and now. Uh, you really don't want to think about uh, any of the problems that you may have going up to get Shep. Uh, the best thing to do is concentrate. And here's Andy uh, getting ready for his, uh, he was the last American to fly on the Mir space station and now he was going up to the International Space Station. And then Paul Richards on his first flight. You can ask him after uh, the video what he was thinking at that time. Okay, this is the walkout here, and what we're going to see next is uh, as you get out to the Discovery, they're going to strap all of us in one at a time. It always starts with the commander. Uh, so we'll see uh, Jim Weatherby getting strapped into his commander seat here. And then they follow that up uh, by uh, kind of going back and forth, one on the flight deck, Wex here, and then they go to the mid-deck, strap in uh, Yuri Usachev, and then they go back and forth to the other crew members. And uh, we sit there, we're on launch pad for a couple hours actually before uh, launch as they get everything ready to go and, and get the vehicle all set and then clear the launch pad so that uh, no one's around. The next scene you're going to see is actually uh, coming up after the strap-in is of the launch itself and in the upper left-hand corner there'll be an inset which is actually a uh, video out the uh, Ten, starboard overhead eight, window. Nine, eight, seven, go for mid Three, two. Now, as we keep heading up hill, you heard some of the calls that go back and forth between the commander and the ground control team, uh, letting us know what phase of flight we're in. This will be the uh, solid rocket booster separation coming up here, and you actually get a little bit of view of it out the overhead window again as well. It's pretty impressive. Uh, the view on the upper left again is out the uh, uh, overhead starboard window. Uh, what comes up next is we got up to a little over Mach 13, and we actually do a roll from a heads down attitude to a heads up attitude, and you'll see that through the window here. And uh, we had kind of a unique view out the overhead window. We tilted the camera a little bit to get a little bit better view going uphill. One of the things that uh, we hadn't gotten a whole lot of video before, you can see here, at a, this is going through about Mach 23. You can see a little bit of plasma in the upper windows. And then, of course, we come off the external tank, which you can see flying away there. And finally, uh, about the last thing we uh, do once we're getting up and getting ready to go is open up the payload bay doors. This is a view taken from Space Station uh, as we were performing the rendezvous. The rendezvous consists of uh, thirds. The first third actually starts on the launch pad. Uh, all of the first third of the rendezvous is controlled by computers, automatically controlled. The middle third of the rendezvous, we use computer guidance, but we manually fly, uh, going exactly where the computers tell us to. And then for the final one third of the rendezvous in this sequence here, we're mostly looking out the window. We do have some tools that we use, a laser range finder system uh, and, a, and a rendezvous radar to give us the very precise information needed for the rendezvous. The vehicle performs so well, it's so well designed by the contractors around the country that you're able to put it within inches of where you need to. Uh, although you're flying at a speed of 17,000 miles an hour, the relative speed is about a, a tenth of a foot per second as you're, as you're finally closing for the docking. Yuri, of course, is very happy because we have uh, gotten to his home and here we are opening the door. And we're all waiting on the uh, inboard side of the station for the Discovery crew. There's Sergey opening the, uh, the, the, the docking hatch there. This is kind of the, friend, the food frenzy uh, when we're, everybody's flying around hugging each other inside. This is, this is now our quarter deck on station. This is, we have a bell in the upper right corner where over Paul's head there, and this is where we uh, gong everybody on and off. It's, uh, it's kind of a, a shipboard tradition that uh, we hope will be continued.
This is just an external view, uh, looking up the stack at uh, the lab and station. And we had a lot of work to do. Uh, this is uh, getting ready for the first spacewalk. That's Susan getting in the uh, uh, lower part of the spacesuit. Uh, you can see it takes several people to help you get dressed. And this is uh, Jim Voss uh, getting in uh, his glove. And again, Susan uh, putting her helmet on. Uh, this was one of two spacewalks that we performed. Uh, uh, each one, each spacewalk putting critical elements. And this is coming out of the hatch. Uh, Jim comes out of the hatch. We have a, a thermal cover uh, that's on the outside. They already opened the inner hatch. And uh, he attaches himself to the arm and uh, starting to prepare to put many modules on. Uh, one of these modules, one of these modules, uh, we had to move. It was already up there, but we need to put the uh, uh, cargo module, the MPLM there, so we had to move this pressurized mating adapter to another place. So Jim and Susan uh, uh, got that ready from the outside by taking cables off. Uh, this is another uh, cradle assembly, uh, kind of a building block that we put on the laboratory module to uh, later attach uh, another piece of space station. So uh, we're stowing that there and, and another crew will come up and uh, continue the construction of space station. And you can see it uh, as it looks, it's very easy to move some of these large masses that are a couple hundred pounds, uh, sometimes thousands of pounds uh, across. Um, and this is Jim and Susan uh, on the laboratory module installing that uh, cradle assembly. And uh, this is the view from inside. Uh, uh, we have robotic operators and, and for the first spacewalk, I was the um, person inside calling out the procedures to Jim and Susan. Uh, this is Susan uh, manipulating uh, uh, some wires. These are actually a wire tray to connect up, some rigid umbilical it's called. And uh, Andy actually uh, helping moving the arm around. At the end of the EVA, we had the task of moving the module you see in the upper part there, the dark shape uh, colored module. Uh, and I used the arm to do that. I brought the arm in and grappled the module. When it was uh, secure on the arm, we released it from the side of the station and then proceeded to drive it around the side of the station to put it on the port side or the left side here, as you can see. Moving this module with the arm was uh, a relatively easy task, even though it weighs many thousands of pounds. Uh, it may be weightless, but it has mass. To help me align it with the uh, station for the reinstallation, Paul set up a very sophisticated computer system, which you can see him uh, doing here, so that I was then able to drive the arm on knowing confidently that it would be positioned. Uh, once it was on and latched onto the side of the station, we were able to release the remote manipulator system um, from the module. The next task that uh, came the following day was again using the arm, and you can see here it's preparing to lift the module that you see in the center of the picture in the payload bay up out of the payload bay to install it on the station. This module weighs about uh, 20,000 pounds and contains about four tons or uh, 9,000 pounds of supplies for the second expedition. Uh, we had to bring it up and as you see there, mate it to the side of the space station so that uh, the expedition crews would be able to access it and start unloading it. Uh, here I am opening the hatch with uh, Jim Voss and Yuri helping. And uh, once we're inside, uh, I guess part of the uh, we missed we missed a cable there that we needed to power up the inside of the MPLM that happened to be in the MPLM before we hooked up. That was uh, kind of a surprise, but we quickly recovered. And inside, Jim's moving a rack here. You can see that the MPLM is really a spacious. Uh, module. It's, it's a lot bigger than uh, we were ready for. It's just, just a really well-built, uh, spacious uh, piece of gear and uh, it's, it's going to serve us well in space station hauling stuff up and down, I'm sure. And here's uh, moving one of the, uh, I guess we moved about six racks. This is one of them that we moved from the MPLM into the lab. It was tight, but it was tight, but see if you went slow to control it and make sure that, uh, I don't think we even put a scratch on a rack doing that. And uh, we were going out for a second spacewalk. This time, Andy and I uh, get to go out. And here you see us uh, suited up in, in uh, getting ready to suit up, checking our cameras and our equipment. And uh, 
once again, here's Andy uh, getting ready and getting the lower part of his suit on and uh, myself doing the same thing. And you can see the different color codes. Uh, mine was a candy stripe, Andy was a broken barber pole, and uh, you can see that's how we're identified. And then uh, it's a tight squeeze to get up into the suit, uh, but much easier in zero G than down here on the earth. Uh, some things do get easier in space. And again, we have a lot of equipment floating around and, and a lot of people helping us uh, to get ready and in, into our suits. Um, and now it's my turn to, to get in the suit. You see some of the other equipment we're wearing is those long johns have liquid cooling tubes and that helps us keep cool uh, during the spacewalk. Uh, outside on a spacewalk it can be uh, minus 250 degrees and plus 250 degrees uh, all kind of at the same time on different uh, areas of the space station. And uh, here's Susan who was our IV or the person inside who who choreographs and help us with our procedures uh, getting ready. And uh, uh, Sergei Krikalov also uh, helping uh, suit us up and getting the helmets on and checking and rechecking to make sure that uh, all the connections are secure. And once again, we come out the door and uh, here's Andy uh, coming out. And we actually came out at a night pass and you can see by Andy's uh, helmet lights that they're on and that helps illuminate our work areas. Um, Andy's hooking up a tether uh, we always tether ourselves and our equipment uh, to make sure we have control over it. And uh, that's Andy and I uh, working outside together. And I believe this was um, uh, close to the end of the EVA when we were gathering our tools. Uh, this was the power tool that you guys keep hearing about that uh, I helped design with a, a bunch of people up at Goddard and I finally got to use it. Uh, although it was only on two bolts, uh, I wanted to take more of the station apart with it, but they wouldn't let me. Uh, <laughs> And uh, this is one of the stowage platforms that uh, um, Andy and I removed from the shuttle and Andy would be up on the arm installing it. And here you see I've uh, received that platform uh, from Paul who's underneath the uh, sill there. Uh, and my job is to carry it up while, while being lifted on the arm up to the side of the space station where there's a trunnion pin where we can install it. And here you see I'm just holding it as the arm slowly lifts me up out of the payload bay. And as you can imagine, it was a great sensation to be suspended over the shuttle like that, uh, carrying this device. Here we are at the top of the station, near the full reach limit of the arm, and uh, Paul and I are installing this device onto the side of the station there. This will enable replacement and spare units and components for the space station to be installed um, and stored outside for later use. There you see a view of the lab with someone in the lab window. The next job we had was back in the payload bay. I had the task of uh, removing this uh, large replacement pump unit uh, from the platform that we'd brought it up and actually going to take it up and put it on that stowage platform that uh, we had just installed a few moments before. This pump unit weighs about 400 pounds, but you can see it's in zero gravity. It's really uh, fairly easy to remove it. And once again, the arm lifted me up out of the payload bay and carried me around up towards the lab structure high above us so that we could install this and mate it to the side of the space station where it still is and it will be available there for future crews to use to replace um, other pump systems in the event that there's a failure. And this is just a view coming up past the lab window uh, up to the installation site high up on the side of the space station. Here you see Paul attending to cables that were also routed and he's making his way down um, past the uh, work site to another work site where we had to do some cable installation. Um, and the other uh, cables that we have to install are for uh, yet another crew to come up and put on the robotic arm. This, these are a, a tray of cables, uh, a rigid umbilical we call it. And uh, we had to actually open up some of the panels uh, on the laboratory and you see Andy off the arm there uh, connecting some of those cables. Uh, and then the uh, next site was Andy going up to the uh, P6 here, all the way up this truss to the top of the top of the station where the solar rays are, are located. And we were going to do some troubleshooting on those. One of the uh, solar ray latches uh, had not uh, locked. Uh, they had three or four locked, which were good enough, but they wanted to get that fourth one. So uh, uh, they let Andy and I go up there, and uh, Andy uh, is translating up there um, in the day. 
I was working on something else and, and came up at night. Uh, so the, the, the view that Danny had and, and we have of him is pretty incredible. It shows you just how large the station is compared to a, a human. And um, uh, this is Andy coming back into the, uh, uh, from the top of uh, the solar arrays and, and showing us coming back in, uh, inventorying our tools, making sure we have everything with us and we don't leave anything outside because this was the last spacewalk and uh, we have to secure the equipment and um, uh, there's we had some film left over and we were able to start uh, taking a few pictures of ourselves uh, we try not to come in uh, with any film uh, unexposed and this is the closure of the EVA crawling back into the hatch and even though you're weightless, of course, you have a very massive bulky suit on and it just gives you some idea of the difficulty you have moving through uh, confined spaces uh, uh, when you do one of these EVAs. And here I am pulling the cover up to, uh, as the first stage of closing out the hatch uh, to terminate the EVA. While the EVA was in progress and after the EVAs, we continued with the transfer operations in the MPLM. And here you see uh, Expedition 1 and Expedition 2 crew members transferring bags of equipment from the racks that were in the MPLM and carrying them over to station and also bringing back uh, old equipment from the station that was stored in the uh, module for return to earth. <laughs> and here you see uh, Expedition <laughs> 2 crew and Bill Shepard down there uh, loading bags of equipment. Once the module was complete uh, and fully loaded for return, we demated it from the side of the station using once again the robotic arm and carefully carried it down back into the payload bay of the orbiter where it was latched in uh, for the return trip back to Earth. Once we'd uh, put it in the payload bay, we were then able to release the arm from the uh, module. <coughs> this is the next day, and this is the uh, handover that Yuri and I had to uh, change command on board. And uh, believe me, this was a pretty electric moment up in space there. And we had, uh, getting ready to close the hatch, this is uh, looking down, uh, well actually up into station, sorry. And the, uh, the docking adapter hatch here from the airlock side. Glad to see the commander is finally doing some work on this mission. <laughs> This begins the scenes of uh, the undock and fly around. As you can see, it gets pretty cr crowded in the uh, aft flight deck. Uh, we basically had six people on the aft flight deck using the windows and all the controls. And, uh, and uh, Wex was in the front uh, backing things up, so all seven people up on the flight deck. Pretty spectacular. We did the undock at night, and you can see it just really gently slides away from the station. And uh, we actually back away and then go to a different mode and start what's called a fly around. And we basically did uh, one and a quarter laps around the station. We started out in front of the station in the direction of motion and then went up to the top so we could see uh, the space station below us and then actually did a full lap from there to go uh, all the way above it to underneath it so we were looking directly up into space and then back up to the top again. Uh, this is pretty critical to get around. We actually do a, a complete photo survey of the outside of the International Space Station as we do this full lap so we can see any changes that have occurred, anything that's going on. Uh, after undock, we're getting ready to come back, and we had a little exercise there to get ready for landing, and this is a fluid dynamics experiment that uh, we were doing uh, that was uh, really just for fun, uh, showing you how water reacts. And uh, Twelve days earlier, we put a tremendous amount of energy into the orbit uh, of the vehicle with uh, millions of pounds of explosive uh, propellant, and the only way to take that energy out uh, on, on entry day is to slam into the atmosphere. Of course, we do get a little bit taller up in space, and so it was a, uh, quite a tight fit making sure we get into our spacesuits for landing. But as we sl slam into the atmosphere, uh, you have uh, millions of uh, atomic particles uh, whizzing by the window, and you see a 25-mile-long trailing plume of fire that pulsates and oscillates as we fire the jets. Here we are on the final approach for landing. Uh, we were trying to get a crosswind test. We had the winds uh, up above the limits that we've flown to before, and uh, 
couple of seconds prior to touchdown, the winds subsided, uh, came down less than the limit, and then right after touchdown, the winds picked up again. So we were either lucky or, or unlucky, depending upon your point of view. The vehicle does fly very well. It's very smooth, uh, and very well designed by uh, the folks years ago. As we roll out, uh, Vegas Kelly, my trusty pilot, puts the drag chute out to help us slow down. Uh, we bring the vehicle to a coasting stop. It will fly one more time, and then it'll go off to uh, Palmdale for refurbishment. Expedition 1 crew uh, came back in recumbent seats, and they uh, had medical experiments, and they were transported back to the uh, crew quarters uh, for continuation of their rehabilitation and medical experiments. <laughs> 